Hey everybody, it's Troy. Let me show you how to use the canvas or what's sometimes called this preview window inside of Camtasia. There's some tricks that will make life a little bit easier and uh, we'll start with a simple metaphor. Now see, it's gonna pick up the color that's on the canvas and all kinds of fantastic little things will happen. I want that a little brighter right in there. A canvas is just like a painter can, uh, painting on things and um, I can place elements in uh, certain parts of the canvas. I can bring it to the middle, I can center it, I can have it uh, scale it up and down. So let's start with something really basic. I'm going to bring some things off to the side on the timeline. We'll talk about uh, adding annotations in a minute. But for now, let's just get what we have as a recording uh, scaled and properly sized. So I have this recording over here and I can even right click on the recording if I want to and I can see the details of this recording. This was recorded at 1600 by 900 um, and I can see that uh, it doesn't quite fill up my canvas, not a problem. I can uh, grab the edges of it and move it to the edge. And you see these yellow lines? That tells me that it's kind of snapping uh, to the edge there. I can do the same thing over here, and yellow lines tells me that it's snapping. There's a whole nother video about what to do if you've got black bars, uh, and uh, I'll put a link to that in the description. But for now, we've got this properly sized, and I'm gonna add a little bit more to the video so we can explain a few more things. I've added this call out. Uh, it happens to have come from annotations and the uh, sketch motion callouts, and then I uh, created a, a custom one here that sort of goes in a circle, but you can use something fairly similar here. So I've created this, it goes around, and what I'm obviously trying to do is to talk about this window over here. I can click and move things around. Now, depending on the call out, or the text, you may have to hold on to the shift key. And let me show you an example of that one. Uh, for example, let me go uh, and I'm gonna add a circle over here. I can drag the corner of this one and I can turn it into an oval. I'm gonna undo control Z, but if I hold down the shift key on this one, it's going to grow uh, with its proportions constraint. So that just is a, a quick tip there. All right, back to our um, issue at hand. So we've got this uh, around the edge of this window. This is kind of what we want because maybe in our video we're going to talk about it. Except we're not quite sure if it's really on target. Uh, so how do we know if, uh, if it's accurately placed? Well, one of the options here is in, up here. I can have this fit uh, my space, as much space as I have over here. Uh, which is 49%. If you have a mouse with a scroll wheel on it, uh, I can scroll in and I can see it better. Uh, additionally here, I can say, well, let me see it at 200%, okay? Now, I'm really zoomed in, so now what? Uh, how do I, I don't even know where the box is. Well, you can hold down the space bar and watch my mouse as it turns into a hand. Additionally, if I want to, I can use the hand mode uh, to move things around. But I hold down the space bar, and now I can click and drag, still holding down the space bar. And I can see, actually, this is not bad. Uh, but if I wanted to, maybe I'll just put it right there. Okay, so that's one corner, that's good. Holding down the space bar. Oh, this one's not so good. So let's bring that one up and we'll put that over there. Holding down the space bar, sort of rinse and repeat and you get the idea, right? Holding down the space bar. Now, uh, I can go back here and I can go back to 100% and see what that looks like. Also, one thing worth noting, Right now, it looks like there's a white border on this one, or that maybe we're off. Uh, the truth is, there's not a white border on it. It's simply that this is active. When I click on it, it's trying to tell me when I've clicked in and 
uh, when I've selected it on the timeline, this white border around it is telling me that this is the one, it's a temporary white border, uh, it's telling me that this is the one that is um, going to be editable. So for example, if I decide to change the thickness, it's just telling me, hey, you've got a couple things on the screen here. Um, and you can modify uh, the one that is active. So, uh, for example, to show that in greater relief, uh, if I've clicked on this one, I can uh, scale this up and uh, I can scale it down. Similarly, I can click on the recording that I made and I can scale that up and down as well. Okay. Um, as always, Control Z allows you to undo. A couple of other tips here about the canvas. Um, as a painter sometimes will paint in different colors. Uh, you can go to your project settings and you can have it so that the canvas um, by default is a specific color. Uh, it's your choice. Um, I tend to keep it at black. Uh, that does help me. Uh, I can see uh, the black over here. And frankly, um, but I can also understand why somebody might um, have it be a different color. Like let's say that their color palette is, uh, let's go to uh, project settings and let's say that uh, I work for uh, a company called Aero Technologies, and I don't want black, but we use kind of this bluish gray, uh, and that makes it easier for me if I ever pull my video off to the side, then maybe I can just put some text over there. So those are options. Um, but uh, for me, I use the background color to know whether or not I've got something that I need to co cover up. I do generally try to have something uh, be full screen. The last thing I want you to do uh, to understand is um, it, what's different than a canvas uh, where everything has just got to fit sort of perfectly and, and uh, it's going to fit within those frames. You can, in a video, you can do a close-up and uh, I can scale it up if I want. Um, I can even do extreme close-ups and that's okay, right? Um, you can experiment with that. You can also uh, adjust it so that you maybe start out uh, like this and then uh, with this selected on the timeline, I'm going to hit shift a and that is going to add a transition So here it's zoomed out and now uh, with this little red dot I can uh, Scale it up and do my close-up right here so that it looks like this All right, uh, and because it's on the canvas I can also uh, Move it up maybe into a, a slight corner so that it zooms up into the into the corner like that so I hope this has been helpful to you. Uh, the last thing I guess I, I do want to show you in the canvas mode is uh, the following. Uh, let me reset this scale. I'm going to hit uh, this button over here to get back to 100% scale. Uh, and uh, well, this is 100% in part because, uh, sorry, let me zoom in. There we go. Uh, this recording itself was not the whole size of the project, so I'll scale that one up. All right. Let's say that what's going on up here is really unimportant. Uh, that all those tools up there, I don't need it. In fact, in my recording, I didn't use this at all. And I really just want to focus people's attention. So... And you see this a lot with recordings that sometimes um, have all your toolbars, your Windows toolbars down here, and heaven forbid you're getting a notification of something and you'd just rather um, be rid of it. One of the options here is crop. And in crop mode, I can then cut out that part of the video so that no matter what happens in that video, it won't show up. Those pixels aren't going to show up. And those pixels aren't going to show up. I go back to edit mode and then from here I can begin to scale it up. Um, now I just have to be conscious of whether or not I, uh, by moving it around, do I need to show this part or do I need to show this part because right now this is off of the canvas. So if something important was happening over here, well, I can use animations and, uh, and then and that will allow me to j jump around from one part over to the next part, et cetera, et cetera. So, I hope this is helpful for you. Uh, thank you for uh, trying and using Camtasia. Wish you the absolute best of luck and look forward to helping you again soon. Thanks a so bunch.